So well, I'm glad you guys are all here. And there's a miter saw going off next door now, of course. Can you guys hear that? No. Okay, good. Because we were like, oh my gosh, seriously? <laughs> It's like, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. <sighs> okay. Well, welcome to your practice, you guys. Thank you so much for coming. It's good to see all of you. Find a comfortable place to sit. And we're going to start with a little breath work, a little bit of meditation. So if you read the email I sent this morning, um, it's uh, Sat Nam. So we're going to breathe in Sat as we breathe in and as we breathe out, not. And you're just gonna say that quietly to yourself as we do this breath practice. So we'll let the um, index and the thumb meet for the yana mudra and just lay your hands in your lap and start by just closing your eyes. Just letting your breath empty. And just take a moment to tune into yourself. So this week we have a lot of uh, personal energy, which really calls us into kind of being in touch with how we feel, with what's going on in our mind, our bodies. We're being really personally aware. And so let's see if today we maybe can use our practice to really tune in, do a little self-inquiry, self-inventory, and also use the practice to give us what we need, which sounded like uh, thoracic, low back, shoulders, so let's work with all that today. So for the next five or so breaths, just scan your body, scan your emotional body, your mental body. Just notice what's going on. Start letting your shoulders drop, your jaw soften. Creating this space for yourself to practice. And then when you feel ready to start the mantra, you'll breathe in sat, and you'll breathe out nam. So we're chanting that truth is our essence, or I am truth, and I being that part of ourself, our soul part of ourself. Just reminding ourselves of who we are. So let this be a way to focus your awareness. The breath be smooth and even if you can. Stretch it out as long as you can without having to strain. This mantra would be energy. Can you breathe this energy in to all of yourself as you breathe out, sending it all to the entire periphery of your body, even past your body to your mat space. We'll do two more rounds. And then just let the mantra go and just notice your state again. Just check in, tune in.
and then join your hands at your heart space. Let those thumbs press into your heart notch, bow your head down. If there's anything you want to dedicate your practice to today, or if there's any intention that you wish to put energy towards with the effort of your practice, then take a moment to name that. And then when you're ready, take your arms and sweep them up. Take a nice deep breath. And then exhale, pull that energy into your heart space. And then one more time, take the arms, reach them up. Nice and high, and then exhale, turn and twist to one side. So it can be hand at the low back or hand at a block. Take a deep breath in, lengthen your spine, and then exhale, twist a little deeper. Take your back arm and lift it up, and then on the exhale, take it over to your opposite knee or thigh, whatever you can reach, and then let the head bow, the belly tone, and then round upper back. Breathe into your upper back area, your jaw, your neck. You can maybe move your head around if that feels good. And then take that right arm, take it up and back all the way back to your twist. And then take both arms up, stretch. And then exhale, twist to the left. Then inhale, lengthen your spine a little bit more. Exhale, twist a little deeper. Then that left arm will reach up and then grab for your opposite thigh or knee and then round upper back as you kind of cat your back. Let your head move around if you want or rock around. And then left arm will come all the way back up. Finish your twist. And then both arms up. We'll side stretch to the right. So you take that right arm, or left arm rather, and then reach it up and over. If you'd rather have a neck release, then you can take your left arm down towards the mat, letting your head be heavy. If you're doing the neck release, take your arm back up, one more big stretch, and then coming back up, both arms up, and then side bend to your left. So may that right arm stretch is overhead, or if you want neck release, release it down. Really broaden through your collarbones. Let the wrist feel heavy away from the neck. If your arm is down, reach the right arm back up. And then both arms reach up. And then exhale, press out and away. And then I'm gonna come on back to my mat space. We will come to all fours. And for a moment, just hold a cat stretch so that the upper back rest, or the upper back inflate rather. Press through your palms, feel your belly tone, with the head really hang nice and heavy, or even shake it out. And let the hips go back, tuck or untuck the toes, keep your cat back. And then come back forward, and let the chest drop, or the belly drop and the chest spread. And then the sitting bones left. Willie, pull the heel of the hands back as you smile those collarbones. And then again, pressing back, keeping the smile of the collarbones. Pause for a moment. And then come on forward. Inhale. Long spine. So lengthen from the crown. Feel the front ribs pull up. And then hinge back, trying to keep your spine nice and long. Walk your hands forward. Pull your heart forward for a moment. Pat your back. Relengthen the spine. And then let the head drop. See if you can widen your sh shoulder blades, wrapping the outer armpits down. Let the head fall. And then go ahead and come right back up. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. So for your first down dog, you can bend those knees if you'd like to allow the low back to lengthen a bit more. Feel like that collarbone smile again. So kind of like that back bend that we just did. So kind of feeling the chest drop a bit, the belly stays toned. And then feel a little bit of a cat back here, so rounding upper back. 
and then re-lengthening, seeing if you can let the hips go back a little further, maybe straightening the legs. Come forward to plank pose. Similar work. Start to let the collarbones smile as you bring the chest forward. Pat your upper back, just the upper back, so you're gonna feel a lot of core work here. And then re-lengthen. And then drop one knee, drop the second knee. Take your right arm and lift up for a twist. So I'm gonna really press into my left palm. I can let my arm be uh, kind of neutral or I can let it be higher. But open through that right chest. And then place that right arm back down. Let's go to the left. So right arm plants, left arm lifts. Then again, really press to the right palm, stretch to the left chest. Even if that means your arm's not quite so vertical another deep breath and then bring the hands down go ahead and come on to your side for a moment so i'm going to use a block either but so i'm going to let my knees be straight out in front of me i can either make a pillow here or i can use a block for my head if you had a pillow that would work too so if you have something to shoulder the block with then you'll use that otherwise take your bottom arm and grab your ribs you guys, make sure you let me know if you can't see for some reason. So what I want you to do for this first round is we're gonna do a chest stretch, not a twist. So as you grab the ribs, hold them in place, tone your belly, and then allow your right chest to open until you feel your body wanting to release, right? So I don't wanna let that happen. I wanna take my right shoulder blade back and get as deep a twist as our deepest chest opening as I can. So as the wrist gets heavy, make sure the right shoulder goes back. You should be getting a pretty good chest stretch. Use gravity. Neck is easy. So if it feels good and you like it, then continue letting the ribs drop and you'll twist. So my ribs will move away. Maybe that feels good if I had the block and that doesn't feel good, I can loosen it. And now I'm twisting with the chest stretch. I'm letting my ribs release. And then Draw that right arm over your head, stretch, hips away. Big stretch, arm overhead. And then bring it down in front of you, just to press up and to switch sides. So same thing, second side. So first, I'm gonna let my head be supported if I want. If not, I'm gonna use that my hand to be a pillow. And then I'll have to just do the work of securing my core with, with my core and not my hands. So I'll show you that. Left arm up. And as I allow my shoulder to move back and my chest to stretch, I'm not letting my ribs go with me. So wherever my range is, it's just whatever I can do without turning. So I'm going to keep my core strong. Stretch through that left palm. Let your wrist get heavy. You can even be moving it a bit. And now if it feels good to allow your ribs to start to release, you can do that. So if I was on anything, I might come off with my head. Your shoulder most likely is not on the floor. And then circle that left arm over your head as you roll back. And then take it in front and then press yourself back up. Coming back up to all fours. We're gonna to come to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and out, and then nice and slowly walk your feet to your hands, top of your mat. Then you're gonna bend those knees and then place that left hand on a block, or you can just use the, a more deeply bent left knee, and then straighten the right leg as you twist. So trying to keep that open chest, right hip drawing back, And then release the right arm down. I'm gonna bend both knees to start. And then as I twist, I'll straighten to the left leg. I can look down, opening up to the chest, keeping that line of energy from chest to palm. And then both hands down forward. Bend those knees, grab onto your elbows if you like to shake, stretch out your low back. And then bend the knees generously and roll up vertebra by vertebra until your head and neck is very last. 
Turn your palms out, stand tall. Open up those collarbones, lengthen through your heels, tailbone, stand nice and tall. And then arm stretch all the way up, big stretch. Then exhale through center seam as you fold forward, long spine. At the very last moment, round your upper back. Long spine, inhale. And on the exhale, step your right leg back for a low lunge. So I'm gonna use a block under my right hand. I'm gonna take the left hand out to the side. Now again, I'm lengthening through my left shoulder. I'm opening through my left chest. Turn your belly and let your arm follow. So I'm not hiking my shoulder further than my torso. I'm keeping them connected and twist. I can look down if I'd like. I can let my head hang. Take three deep breaths here. Stretch up through your left palm, anchor down through your left heel. And on the exhale, I'm gonna bring that hand down and I'll step back to downward facing dog. Lift your heels and roll your body forward. Collarbone smile, upper back round. Same thing we did earlier. Re-lengthen, drop to your knees for this first one all the way to your belly. And we'll go cobra. So whatever way you wanna do cobra, hands forward or hands back. Pull the heel, the hands back, lift your chest. Take an extra breath and then lower it all the way down. And from here, tuck your toes. We're gonna round up our back to come up. Cat back, lift your knees, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Then your right leg's gonna lift. Take a pause, step it forward, low lunge. So my left hand will be on a block. If you don't have one, it's okay, use a fist. Right arm out to the side. So you can open the chest and upper back. And then as you turn your torso, let your hands follow. So I want to keep that lift without letting my arm go behind my shoulder. Keep it in mind. A couple more breaths. And then both hands down, step forward, forward, fold. You want to use the block, do so. Left hand plant, left knee bend, twist to the right. Both hands down, halfway lift. You could use a block. And then right knee bends, left leg straightens, twist to the left. Both hands down, forward fold. Bend those knees, round and release your way all the way up. Arms stretch up. On the exhale, hands meet at the heart. Release your hands all the way down. Do one round of Sat Nam. Breathing in Sat, breathing out Nam. Arms reach up, stretch. And on the exhale, round your body and go all the way down. Halfway lift, hands come up, forward fold. Take your left leg step back and rise high lunge. This time, interlace your hands and press up. So you can get your ribs to move back and really lift up so you get a little lighter in the lower back. And now turn and twist to the right as far as you can using your core strength. And then open your arms where they may fall. So they may not be completely front to back. It's totally okay whenever they fall. Relax your shoulders and turn from your belly, letting the shoulders just kind of be where they are, but they're lengthening apart. Take another deep breath. And then bring both arms forward like if someone's kind of drawing your upper back to round or you're drawing your hands forward. And then pull the shoulder blades on your back. Reach your arms up. And then this time we're going to do a little circle twist. So you can twist however you want. People like to kind of turn and twist with the arms. You can go down if you want. But just try to twist a different way because we pushed up and we twisted. Now I want you to kind of maybe move your arm with you. And this could be fluid. So you can try it a couple different ways. Kind of moving around, just kind of getting that shoulder to lubricate in the groin. And then both arms up, take a deep breath, reach. And the exhale, lengthening as you come all the way down. Step to downward facing dog. And then roll your way forward. A little back bend in play. A little cat back in play. Re-lengthen all the way down. So knees or not. Cobra once again. This time, hover the legs. Drop the legs, hover the hands. And then all the way down. 
Then from here, tuck your toes, plant your hands. You're going to round your upper back, lift your knees, so have the cat back, and then roll back downward facing dog. Left leg lift. Step it forward, high lunge. All the way up. Make sure you're wide enough apart so you can balance. Interlace your hands, press up. I'm going to pull my ribs back and really lift. Now I'm going to twist to the left using my core strength and then open the arms just wherever they fall. No need to force it. Stretch my arms apart, not by lifting, but by allowing that breath to dilate the arms. Okay, take the arms forward. And again, like someone's pulling your hands forward, round upper back. Pull the shoulder blades back. Bring your arms back up. This is how you're going to experiment. So I might pull the arm down and twist. I might pull it up and twist. I might bring it forward. Just kind of play around with what works. And I'm twisting towards my bent leg. Yeah, towards the bent leg every time. It up. And when you're ready, both arms up. Big stretch and then exhale, relengthen as you step and fold forward. Twisting again, so left arm down, left knee bends. Take your right arm up. Release the right arm, bend the right knee. Take the left arm up. Both arms down, bend the knees generously, round your way up. Head, neck, and shoulders very last. Arms stretch up and reach. Hands to the heart. One round, sat nam. Inhale is sat. Nam's on the exhale. Release the hands. Then the arms are going to stretch up. Then sink back chair pose. So you're going to choose however you liked to twist. If you liked what we did before to press up in a twist and in the open, if you liked rolling, I want you to choose what felt great for your shoulders and twist to one side. Just to the right. And as you're ready, bow forward. See where you landed in your twist. I'm going to bend my left knee. Now take your right arm down to the floor and pull your right shoulder blade on your back. So now I'm starting to strengthen the upper back and re-lengthen the right arm. Notice the difference in how that feels in your core and in your chest. Just, just notice. And then as you're going to come up, the right hand goes to the small of your back and the left arm reaches up. And we'll go hands to the heart. Second side, arms reach up, sink back, chair pose. Choose your own adventure. So maybe you liked what we did first, you're gonna try that. Maybe you're gonna roll your arms into a twist. Make sure your knees are somewhat level and toes together, bow forward. So now I'm gonna bend the right knee as I bow forward. Notice where your arm is in space, notice the sensation of your twist and of your chest stretch. And then the left arm goes down to the floor. Pull your left shoulder blade on your back like you're kind of pulling back on a string or a, a band and then left arm up. Just notice the difference. Tip up and back. Right arm comes up, left arm small on my back, and then hands to the heart. Nice. Arms stretch up. This time bow forward with a long spine. Keep your chin tucked. At the very last moment, fold. Halfway lift again. Step on back. Come right into plank pose. Right into plank pose. Smile those collarbones. Puff your upper back up. Come somewhere in between to a plank pose. Do a chaturanga. Pause. And then upward facing dog. So if you want to do one leg at a time. Also, if you want to do locust or cobra instead. Now come to a plank pose, tuck your toes, and now round upper back, and come all the way up and back. Breathing in, breathing out. We're gonna step the right leg forward for a warrior one. So I'm gonna go a little bit wider apart, take your arms and stretch up. Now I'm gonna split my arms apart, thumbs up, and hinge forward. So the trick here is keeping the hips square and the torso doing the work, not the shoulders. So now I'm going to turn to the right as far as I go, and this is my twist. So my right arm lifts, my left arm goes down. I'm 
is twisting from my torso. You should feel a lot of core work. Relax your head and your neck. Take another deep breath. And now take both arms down, split your legs a little further apart and reverse your warrior. So you can grab onto your right wrist if you want a little bit more. You can even fold the right arm back for a tricep stretch. So that might feel good too. Take some deep breaths, sink into your right leg. And then as you're ready, straighten both legs out. We're gonna go left arm internally rotated, rotated to come to the small of your back and then hinge forward into triangle pose. Let's do a neck release. Let's look down or relax the head. Broaden through that left shoulder. So as your hips are kind of left hip turns forward, see if you can lift the chest and turn without pulling the shoulder. So keep the shoulder wide, turn from the belly. Snake the left arm from behind your back and then reach up, turn and rotate the palm to face over your ear and stretch. And then take the arm back up, leading with that left side body, come to warrior two. We'll go right arm on top of left eagle. So I'm gonna broaden up her back and my Hands will go to the right, my head will go to the left. And then big neck stretch. You can also windshield wiper if that would feel better. So check that out. If you feel like movement would feel soothing. Okay, come back to Eagle Warrior Two. Turn to face your front leg. So now I'm more like in a high lunge. Wrap your left leg over your right and sit. So just for a couple moments, reestablish your base. So maybe that's left toes down on the block. Now turn your torso to the left. You can either just stay here and maybe get a deeper right shoulder stretch, or you can sink down, relaxing your head, similar to the first twist we did when we were seated. Really similar. Let your head go. Keep breathing for three, for two, and then slowly come up, unravel the arms, take your left knee up, any way you wanna twist. So either rotating the arm back, twisting, however you wanna get there, standing knee raise twist. If you wanna bind your hand to your foot, do that. Open your chest. If you wanna extend the leg, you can. Come out of your twist. Both, uh, both arms come up and then hands down, release. Take a moment, one round, satna. Arms are gonna stretch up. Seat back, chair pose. Remember, we're getting however we want into our twist. So twist to one side, bow forward. Put the right arm down, pull the shoulder on your back, deeper twist perhaps. Tip up and back. If you wanna use your hands to support your head, please do that. Both hands to your heart. Arms sweep up, inhale, seek back. However you wanna go into your twist on the left. Tip forward. You just stay in your twist and tip forward. And then the left arm comes down. Pull the left shoulder blade onto your back and extend. And you just press into your feet, tip up, tip back. And again, if you need that head head support, take it. Both arms come up. And on the exhale, bring your hands to the center seam, tuck your chin as if you're rolling down. Nice and slow. Long spine. Step right into plank. Smile your collarbones. Pat your upper back. Come to a long spine and however you'd like to chaturanga to upward dog or to something else. And always repeat cobra. And then come back to a plank. 
Retuck, cat your upper back, round and release all the way back to down. When you're ready, left leg forward for warrior one. Take your time coming all the way up. Arms out, thumbs up. So I'm gonna keep my hips square. So I wanna make sure the right hip point faces forward. Then I hinge forward, keep my back foot as a strong anchor, tighten through my midsection. And as I turn, I'm turning my torso, I'm not pulling on the shoulders. So the difference is I'm not letting the arms move the torso, I'm letting the torso move the arms. So it might be a less satisfying twist, but way more core effort. For three, stretch your palms apart without letting your neck tense for two. Bring both arms back down, reestablish warrior two position, and tip up and back. I'm just going to switch positions in my mat. So remember I was saying you could do a tricep stretch for your reverse warrior. I could grab onto my wrist, whatever would feel good. Sink in that front thigh. And then as I'm ready, I'll bring the arms back up, straighten my legs. Internally rotate that right arm, take it to the small of my back. Let the hips move back, lengthen forward to a block in your shin. So the head goes. So do tighten up through your core. It's okay for your right hip to slide forward a bit. And so as that kind of rounds naturally the upper back, use your core strength to twist without using your shoulders. Let that elbow feel heavy. Let the head go, the jaw. As you're ready, the right arm's gonna unsnake its way up. Take a big chest opener here, and then slide the palm over your ear. Stretch out from right heel to right hand, right arm back up. Press into your feet, come up. Bend the left knee. And then we got eagle arms, left arm over right. So this is where I had my hands to the left, head to the right, unless I liked the windshield wiper, but which can feel nice if your neck and upper back are tight, just kind of a lot more mobility might feel good, but you might also like the stillness. So we're breathing into upper back. We're letting our shoulders settle down away from our ears, but our elbows are reaching away from the heart. So nice and carefully, turn to face your left leg. So now I'm in a high lunge, so I have to kind of reposition. Find a focal point, find your core, eagle pose. Right leg over left. And I might take a moment to settle. I might need a block under my right foot or a wall. Keep your hips where they are, turn your torso. Check out that twist, maybe that's where you want to stay. Or maybe you let the hips move back and you let the arms drape. I find this one to be nice for upper back tension because you can let your arms be like counterweights. So I'm still using my core, still squeezing the legs. Find your way up nice and slow. Release your arms, right knee lifts. However you want to get into that twist. So some people like to wave their arms. People like to take their arms up first, you decide. If you wanna bind your foot to your hand, you can do that, or just straighten your leg. One more big twist. And then both legs down, arms stretch up. Hands to the heart. One, sat nam. Sat on your inhale. Nam on your exhale. Arms sweep up, big breath. This time, long spine as you come down. At the very last moment, round and release. So if I need to bend my knees, please, please let yourself do that. Shake your head out. Let your head shake yes. Let it shake no. Let it roll in circles. Right leg's going to step back. Take your right knee to the mat. Let your right arm come up. So we're gonna bend the right arm for a tricep stretch. My left arm can kind of move that bicep towards my ear and back. So maybe I'll just stay here for a tricep stretch if I want a little more. And I have a strap handy. I could inter-rotate the left arm, 
naked up the strap. And as I'm in a low lunge, I can stretch my shoulders. Letting the left shoulder drop down, the right elbow reaches up from that lower armpit area. Add a little bit of side stretch, so kind of leaning over to the left a bit so that right arm gets a little higher. And then nice and slowly releasing the strap. Then taking your hands down to the floor, coming to all four toes. Just neutralizing the back. Tuck your toes, keep your navel nice and strong. Cover your knees. Nice low transition into downward facing dog. Three breath cycles here, just slowing it down. And then dropping down to your knees, sitting back onto your left heel. So if you want to place a block underneath, you can. Leaning to the left and extending through your right leg. So I can either sit on my heel or if I had a block handy, which I do somewhere, I'll place it underneath my sitting bones. And I'll slide my left heel outside my hips. So either way. Sometimes I tend to overextend my knee, so if I had anything like a rolled up blanket or a second block, it can come here so that I don't have that hyperextension. So the arms are going to reach up, hinge at your hips to allow the pelvis to move back, and then round and release. Again, strap. You can take on, take a hold of that strap. Let your head go, big breaths, upper back. And then slowly coming up. So this is where for some people will be a little different because sometimes the block's too much. And it's okay if you start, start to let your hips slide over to the right. I'm gonna walk my hands back and I might just be here where I have my fingers turned forward or slightly out. And I just let my hips move back a little bit. Some of you can recline. Uh, maybe to your forearms. You might want something underneath, but just, just kind of going to your comfort level. So I'm going to take a moment to come watch and see if anyone needs any help. You guys look awesome. Those that I can see, which I can only see like some of your heads or a knee. <laughs> so wave if you need anything that looks good. Yeah, Kate, you might slide your heel in Guido too. You might want to slide it a little wider, just if it feels better. You guys can try that out. Yeah, just it might give you more space to go sit further on the floor. Even if you tilt to one side, that's okay. So I didn't really, you can't really see me very well, but so I'm kind of over to one side because I'm off the block. <sighs> Three more breaths. And then slowly coming up, you're gonna lean to your straight leg hip to take this leg and neutralize it forward. So I'm gonna slide back in my back. Take a deep breath and stretch up. On your exhale, we'll roll down nice and slowly. Arms stretching overhead. And then draw your knees into your chest. We're gonna neutralize this with a bridge. So feet down flat if you want to use a strap or anything for your hands or a block for your low back, grab that. As you're ready, press into your feet, lift your hips. If you want to take a bind, you could clasp underneath, roll into the outer border of shoulders. So we're definitely using the glutes and the hamstrings to extend the hips. But do let your thigh bones slide towards your knees. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And then just gently, you can roll or just set the hips down. Just take a pause and breathe.
resetting the spine. The knees come up to tabletop. I'm gonna press the hands on top of the knees just for weight and press straight down. So if my knees are too far forward, I won't feel this in the lumbar, but if my knees are right over my hips, as I press down, I'll feel a little support, a little length of the low back. And as you're ready, rock and roll yourself up. If you'd like to take a vinyasa, like plank, chaturanga, totally take that. If you want to do a cat-cow instead, or a child's pose, you can totally do that. We will uh, meet in downward facing dog when you're ready. We'll take that left leg forward and the right knee will come down. Wait, so we have switched that. We've already done that side. I'm just gonna turn the back, face the back of my mat and then I'm good. The left arm comes up. Bending at the elbow, I can choose just a tricep stretch. So I can kind of bring my arm bone towards my ear and kind of press it back without letting the rib cage flare too much. Or I'll grab a strap. If I don't have strap, clothing works. Internally rotating, grabbing onto clothing, letting my hips release forward. Right elbow getting heavy, left arm hit all the way up to the left arm stretches. And then maybe a little bit of a side bend can feel nice. Nice and slowly releasing your arms, arms reach up, both arms down, just coming to all fours for a moment, just to neutralize the back, and then sitting back. So you're going to take the left leg forward, so I'll lean over to the right to get my left leg, and if I have a block handy, I can stick it under my sitting bones. And for me, I'm going to stick this bolster under my knee so I don't hyperextend. So I have my heel, because I have a block, outside my hip. If you're kind of hanging out um, without, like, in space because you don't have a, a block, that's when you sit on your heel, just to kind of minimize that feeling of over um, working knees. Arms are going to stretch up. I'm going to show you a different way to take the hands back to kind of press into the floor if that helps you get the pelvis forward. So really, it's your choice. If you prefer the hands forward, go ahead and take Like this. Oh, I almost knocked the camera. Letting yourself release, breathing into your upper back. Slowly coming up. So I'm going to kind of roll to the side to take my block off. Then I will move my uh, ankle away a bit so that I have space to come back. And again, this, this is assuming it doesn't bother your knee. So if you're having any knee pain, you can totally uh, let your foot come in towards your inner thigh. Okay, so rocking back, I'm gonna lift my hips and then reset them down. And I'm just gonna go to where I start to feel like my body naturally take a pause and I'll just keep letting it pause. And maybe there's more room to go back and maybe I'm just getting that gentle opening Maybe I have more space to come down. You had a bolster. It's a great place to stick a bolster in, then you can just relax on that bolster. Taking your time to slowly make your way up. Do make sure you lean to the left so you can safely move your thigh bone in your socket to bring it forward. And then since a windshield wiper ankle is kind of good just to kind of shake it out. Yeah. And then this time we're gonna relengthen the spine with uh, altar pose. So feet flat. Um, I turn my fingers forward, but if you have less space in your chest or your shul front shoulders, turn your palms uh, out. Draw the shoulders on your back, lengthen your spine, and lift your hips. It's a big chest stretch. 
So you can lengthen your tailbone, feel those glutes and hamstrings, just like you did in bridge, very similarly. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And then nice and slowly suck the hips down. Pull your knees into your chest and roll onto your back. You might roll a few times if that feels good. So we're going to create some length in the low back through doing some isolated core work. And it's going to seem like it's like really easy. But if you're really feeling this iron out the low back, it should feel pretty challenging for the core and like really nice for the low back. Okay. So if you have a block, place it between your legs. You certainly don't have to have that. But it certainly does give a little bit more access of the inner thigh. So all we're going to be doing is you're going to be relaxing your belly, and you'll notice that you naturally have some type of curvature in the low back. We're going to interlace the hands behind the head, nice firm clasp, elbows point slightly up, just enough that we're not letting the arms hang, but not so much that we close off the throat. I'm going to imprint the spine by pulling the navel down, lengthening the tailbone. So if I just did that, like I was going to roll up, you should notice that that curve flattens in my low back. That's really all we're going to do. I'm going to lift my heels because that takes it out of the hip flexors a bit. So we're going to deep breath in. Empty your breath. Kind of imprint your spine by lengthening tailbone, pulling navel. And you, if you want to, you can lift your upper half, but you don't have to. So I'm pulling the navel down, really lengthening the tailbone. You should feel a nice kind of pressure in your low back. And then let that go, release. Deep breath out, or deep breath in. Let all the breath come out. That should naturally already imprint your spine. Pull navel and then lift your upper core if you want it. Take another exhale to do the same work. You should really feel that low back pressing down. Let it go. Keep going. Do about five or six more on your own counting. So you should feel the belly go down. You can use the inner thighs a bit. We don't want to overwork that and try to let the head fall. So I was trying to cue you to do the lower belly work and then let the upper back follow so that you don't do this by pulling onto the head first. So it's really low isolation. And then try it again and then let it go. Use your breath. A good way to get rid of some aggro sometimes is to do that deep core work. Kind of imagine letting that fire energy let you blow off some steam. Now, for the last two, if you want to add a little bit more in, as you imprint, you could lift the feet to hover and you could place them down. So maybe two to three more if you want to add the feet. Make sure you've got a really nice imprint so that as you lift and lower the feet, you're not losing that imprint until you relax consciously. And then let it go. Nice work. Remove the block. Let the knees come up. Let the knees widen. Grab onto the tops of the ankles, the shins. Let your ankles go. Send your legs all the way up to the sky. Point and flex a few times. Again, relengthening low back. And then you get to pick your favorite hip stretch. So if that's pigeon, go into pigeon. If you want to do Supta Baddha Konasana, that one works on your back. Figure four is another great hip stretch we do sometimes. Cow face on your back. Right? Lots of hip stretches. Maybe you want to lay on your belly and stretch your quad. So we're getting personal this week. So I want you to feel your own body and see what would feel super nice right now for you. And then as you're in that pose, can you repeat the mantra Sat Nam? With every breath in, you're breathing in Sat Nam on the breath out. And try to really slow the breath down. Smooth it out. And maybe if there's any soreness in the low back or the hips, that you're going to really focus that energy into that. 
that area. Just imagine that third eye area broadcasting that mantra and then sending it anywhere in your body, maybe to the entirety of yourself. Try a couple more rounds of the mantra. And then when you need to switch, so in between sides, uh, take a neutral shape like child's pose or down dog or maybe vinyasa is a great way for you to kind of cleanse and reset in between. Maybe it's just seat, uh, sit, seat, sitting on your mat. And then when you're ready, it's round two. So you can pick a different pose if your hip opener was the same for each side of your hips. Otherwise, go ahead and switch it out. Add in Satnam if you'd like. You let your inhales and exhales be even. Smooth out the breath so that it's not rushed or labored. So maybe it's only three pounds, maybe it's four. Maybe about three more rounds of the mantra. And then when you finish your third round, again, come to that neutral shape, whatever that is for you, or a vinyasa or a cat cow. And then we're gonna do a little bit of focused breath work before we lie in Shavasana. So if you would prefer to do that breath work on your back with your knees bent, please do that. Or your legs up a wall. If you'd like to sit for the breath work, then you can do that. So we're gonna do a equal inhale, exhale, and equal hold. And that hold's gonna be at the top of the inhale. So the goal of this is to create some symmetry and some kind of evenness through your body. So if the breath is too long and you start to feel like anxious or if it starts to feel like it's labored, then just go down and maybe it's only three counts or uh, maybe it's you know only two counts. So we're just trying to get the breath to even out so that it feels very peaceful and not at all stressful, okay? So empty your breath out and breathe in. Let's try for four, three, two, hold at the top for four, three, two, and then breathe out for four, three, two, breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four. Continue that and if four is too long, go down to three and continue. Try not to tense your jaw, your body when you're holding your breath. Maybe you found you can go a little longer, so you can try that out for a round or two. And we can always go back.
finish one more round just like that. And then just check in with yourself. So just releasing the breathing pattern, breathing naturally, just noticing how you find yourself after our practice. Noticing your mood, how your physical body feels, how your mind feels. And then deciding how you'd like to rest for Shavasana. So if that's on your back, on your side, on your stomach, using props. Some days it's nice to stay in seated meditation and continue that breath work if that's something that would be helpful. So choose what delights you. So we're working with the solar theme this month of the sun. And so perhaps as you're in Shavasana, you can imagine with every inhale, breathing in that sunlight to rejuvenate your energy. And you're sending it somewhere special or just sending it to your body on your exhale. You feel like you have tension in your body or just stuck energy, that heat can kind of help loosen and kind of burn away. So you can use that sunlight as heat the fire is transformative energy. So after you make that initial intention for how to use that solar energy, then you can just let it go, trust the process, and just breathe and relax. Letting your face relax, your eyes, your jaw. Letting your upper shoulders and your back relax. Chest. Letting your arms relax. Your abdomen. Feeling your pelvis settle and relax. your legs relax, your feet, your fingers and toes. Maybe let a sigh come out and just oh, really let yourself take the last little bit of time to just really be exactly how you find yourself, just letting it go. Worries and cares go, thoughts, to-do lists. Just a minute, let every single thing go. In the next few moments, if you feel like you want to move again, go ahead and move again. Wiggle fingers and toes, maybe roll to one side. If you feel like coming up to a seat, go ahead and make your way there. And if you want to keep relaxing on your back, please do that. We're going to end with our fearless heart mudra. So I'm going to get a little closer because I know it's hard to see. So palms together, Anjali Mudra, right wrist over left, back of the hands together. Right hand's always hooking the left. Index, middle, pinky. Ring finger, thumbs, touch. Bring the mudra to your heart and take five luxurious deep breaths.
send this fearless, fearless heart mudra energy to those in our circle, in our community, even those that could make it today that we know. You have anyone in your own circle that you wish to send this fearless heart mudra energy to, send it there. Let your hands join at your heart. Bow towards your heart, your efforts today, your commitment to practice, which is truly a commitment to yourself, right? I know for me, I'm a better person because I feel more in touch with myself and that therefore I am more in touch with my life when I practice. So whatever reason you come to your mat, it is a commitment and a gift to yourself and probably most everyone in your life. So thank you for that. The light in me honors the light in you, friends. Namaste. So glad you practiced with me today at Mount Hood.